Welcome to Gospel in Life. Thank you for joining as we go through this special series of meditations by Tim Keller, Trusting God in Difficult Times. This new series is meant to encourage you to trust God more deeply and to meditate on His Word and what it promises to give you strength and hope in difficult times. And now here's today's meditation. The title of this reflection is Don't Waste Your Sorrows. I want to read just verses 5 and 6 of Psalm 126. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping carrying seed to sow will return with songs of joy carrying sheaves with them. Now this is a, this is a remarkable metaphor in which your sorrows, your tears, are like seed, which when sown properly can bring you a harvest of joy. Uh, the implications of the metaphor are at least these two. First of all, the first implication is that it's possible to waste your sorrows. Uh, imagine a, uh, a, a farmer going out with a sack of seed and he's supposed to be sowing it all over. Instead, what if he just dumped it in one spot? That would be a waste of seed. There wouldn't be a, a harvest. There might be a few uh, fruit that, that grew up right there, or maybe nothing. Uh, it would be a total waste. And it's possible, therefore, to, to grieve in such a way that doesn't produce any fruit in your life at all. In other words, it's possible to just dump, <laughs> especially when you're grieving. That's actually a, a very good metaphor. It's possible just to just, just weep, just cry, just, just yell and scream and, uh, and basically not see any real fruit in your life from it. So it's possible to waste your sorrows. But secondly, the most intriguing part of this idea here is this metaphor, is that the joy is produced by the sorrow. You see, we all hope and believe that, uh, that joy will follow sorrow. And there are, there are passages of the Bible where it says, uh, Psalm 30, verse 5, weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And most of us think, yes, we're very sad, but we're hoping God brings joy in after our sadness time is over. But this is going beyond that. It's not just saying that joy follows sorrow. It's saying that joy is actually produced by the sorrow. And what can that possibly mean? What it can mean is that sowing seed, the, the, the sadness and the grief actually makes you a, can make you a happier person in the long run. Uh, and if, if you sorrow in the proper way. Now, how could that possibly be? And the answer is, I mean, I, I don't know what the psalmist knew, but what we know because we're Christians is this. If you look to Jesus, this can come true. First of all, Jesus is the ultimate example of someone who brought joy out of sorrow. Jesus Christ literally brought joy, brought us joy out of his weeping. His agony and his weeping was substitutionary. He stood in our place. And therefore, when he took our punishment, his weeping was the ultimate sowing in tears and it brought the ultimate harvest of joy. Now, when I see him uh, dying so that I could live, when I see him going through all this incredible grief and sorrow so he could bring joy to the world, that enables me to sorrow in a far better way. Why? Well, first of all, when I think of him uh, suffering for me, I won't suffer in guilt. I won't sit there and say, well, maybe I'm suffering because God is punishing me. No, Jesus took my punishment. Secondly, I won't, when I'm suffering, I won't so uh, suffer in self-pity and anger. I won't say, how dare God let this happen to me? And I say, wait a minute, God suffered more than I did so that I can someday live with him forever. And that gets over your self-pity and your anger. And then, of course, thirdly, when I see him suffering for me, I can suffer in patience. Because I say, look, his disciples did not understand what was going on when he went to the cross. He said, what could, what could God ever bring good out of this? And yet God did, of course. So when I see him suffering for me, it makes me patient. It, may, it gets rid of my anger and self-pity. It also gets rid of any sense that I might have of guilt. And you know what happens then? Then I just become patient, leaning on him, humbling myself. And when it's over, the sorrow creates a new Christ-likeness, uh, an ability to uh, depend on God and not on my circumstances. Jesus Christ was the ultimate example of sowing tears that reap joy. And if you watch him, suffering for you, if you keep your eye on him when you suffer, your sorrows will not be wasted, but they will bring long-term great joy. 
And now here's Tim and Kathy Keller for a short time of Q&A on today's meditation. Going through difficult times and even tragic times and coming out on the other side with nothing to show for it seems to me to be the ultimate waste. I mean, uh, you talked about people who um, try to just put their minds somewhere else. Uh, I find in myself, other people, there's a, a tendency to just put your head down, grit your teeth, and wait for it to be over, rather than using it as a learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, come up with some things that people can do to make a tragic time or bad time into a learning experience. Uh, the reason I ask this is because we're told in Scripture that we're supposed to comfort other people with the comfort that we yeah. received. Yeah. So if we didn't receive any comfort, if we haven't done anything to amass comfort that then we can then share out to other people, then we've just we've wasted the whole thing. It's it's doubly tragic. So how do you amass those things that you're going to be able to share mm -hmm. with other people? I actually think that the main way you do that is to do what you should be doing as a Christian anyway. Uh, but under the suffering. So it's, it's a little bit like uh, uh, the, uh, what you often see when it, before a batter gets up into the batting box, he'll be uh, not just, uh, he won't be just having one You're bat. You're giving me a sports metaphor, Drew. I am giving you a sports metaphor. <laughs> okay. So he's taking maybe a metal, bat, a metal bat or some other bat, it's something heavier, so that when, the, when he finally sheds all the heaviness and he goes back to just having a bat, the bat will feel very light in his hands. And so he'll be the able practice to, bat is weighted. That's right. And then the real one is lighter. That's right. And see, he, ha he, oh, has the, he has the real bat, the one he's really going to use, along with the practice bats. And so when you just read the Bible, uh, pray, go to the church, take the sacrament, reach out and help people, uh, under your suffering, it just feels awful. And yet... Paul says, our slight momentary affliction is achieving for us an eternal weight of glory which far outweighs them all. And right before he says that, he says, though our outer body is wasting away, or inwardly we're being renewed every day. And what that simply means, I think, is that when you just do the normal things, use the means of grace, obey God, be kind to other people, especially reading the scripture, especially the Psalms, and praying, when you have that uh, practice bat on you, then when it goes away, you're going to find, man, I have grown. I have become more patient. I've become more caring. I've become more loving. Because what's happening is your inner uh, spiritual person is being developed. Well, it's like lifting weights in a gym. Exactly. Something like that. You feel weaker. You feel worse. You feel terrible. Exactly. You feel like, I don't like this. And yet you're actually yet getting, you're getting stronger. stronger. Okay. Okay, I get it. If you found today's meditation encouraging, Please subscribe below and be sure to share it with a friend to encourage them as well. And if you'd like to hear more teachings by Tim Keller, you can listen to new sermons every week at gospelandlife.com slash podcast. Thanks again for watching Gospel and Life.